Hi folks, thanks for joining me again, many thanks for your support. Um, so today we've got, it's like a little sort of big, or like a big pond type of effect with a few foreground dark trees in the, in the shadows, a few flowers in the foreground, quite a very, very high horizon line this time. And then just try to get some of those sky colours in the water and create this light effect down the centre of the page. So before I show you how I did this one, let's have a look at the, uh, the colours I've used. So if I just get the palette the right way around, um, we've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarding crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. And I've got a few brushes here, but most of the time I'm just using the, the large hake brush there and the number three rigger just there. The others I use occasionally, but not, not very often. I'm going to start off by wetting the paper all over. Then I want to start with a bit of raw sienna and a lizard in crimson. I'm going to add a bit of ultramarine to it as well. But you'll notice I'm trying to preserve the centre of the paper. This will act as our light source later on in the watercolour. It will all become apparent, hopefully. And then what I do, if it gets too dry, I've just got this mister right next door to me so I can keep it wet. And that way I can keep adding colours without getting hard edges. If I want an intense burst of colour, I'm just give some of these in. Ultramarine there. So you can see it keeps it soft, all the edges nice and soft. Right then, I think I'm ready to start with the background there. Now it's quite a high horizon line, so I want to mix all the colour, basically everything I've just done, mix all those together. I'm going to start with uh, some trees right up there in the distance. Right up there somewhere. And then they come around a little bit. Push a bit of adding while I'm there. I'm just keeping an eye on it as it's coming down and just just constantly just just very very lightly catching it just to keep keep that light effect down the centre. A little bit higher than that for right then, so that's up there like that, something like that. And then we're going a little bit darker. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of Burnt umber, Payne's grey in there. This one's a little bit closer and a little bit more silhouetted. That's good in there, that's in front of what we've just done. So I'll pop that in. There's a little bit of that on the other side. Paper's dried a little bit, or stretched rather, so I'm just going to pull it tight against my board so I can carry on properly. And then I'll be good to go again. So I'm just watching the water at the bottom of the paper. I'm barely touching the paper, I'm just catching it just very, very slightly just to keep the keep those strokes all nice and horizontal so everything's just not drooping down. Right then. And we're giving up there something like that. Let's clean the brush. Put 
what I might do is just the odd just the odd fingernail here and there these these are meant to represent tree trunks Got a few on there as well don't do too many just the odd one on there just little subtle bits there there's a bit of raw seal in there that's going all up there onto that In. That's got a block of water's edge there, there's the banks of water. This is just the edges of the water I'm putting in there. Just straightening all that off. Oh no, it's moving over to the left hand side. Now we've got some big bushes and things there. So I'm just going to Lock in some big bushes first. A few reflections, just pull some reflections straight down. And then what I'm going to do is switch to the rigger brush. A bit of brown, plenty of water, a bit of brown, a bit of blue. And we've got some big trees going up there. Keep reloading the brush. Pull down a few reflections. And I'm just mixing brown and blue on this now. Just to in fact I'll bring that a little bit lower on that bank. If you can imagine what the, like, the bank is some, something like that. Something like that. I'll just mark that off there. Back to the brown and blue. That's going up there. And then we've got a few tweaks and things, all sorts of stuff growing up there. Lots of stuff growing on the edge. Right, let's just move some of these a little bit more, a little bit more across. We've got that coming down there, and there's a few coming from the top. I'm just doing a whole load of twigs and things all growing on mass. I'm not going to paint every single individual leaf and twig and branch. So I just sort of do them something like that. do next just darken a little bit of this some more darks in there I think just 
dark or just the base of that. Right then, just, just loosen it all up a little bit. Just line, just want to lighten some of these areas. A little bit of light area in there as well. Also, in some blue. Introducing a little bit of red, just general darks now basically, just to contrast against the lights. that down a little bit more so we just imagine it's just a few little I'm scraping the odd rock here and then just paint over what I don't like maybe with the rigger brush Just a few trunks with the rigger and then bring a few dark lines down there. more brown, a bit more blue and uh, if you haven't noticed I am sort of in total experimental mode just to see what sort of effects I can get now I'm thinking back a few flowers in the foreground at this, at this point So what I might do I'm thinking I'll just get to make sure that's flat and I'll just give it a quick dry quick dry
right, so first of all, I just want to strengthen out the, the tones because if they always dry. Whenever you dry your painting, you'll probably notice it always dries lighter. So I want to get them darks back in. I'm strengthening those trunks and things, including the reflections. Now let's do a bit more with a rigger brush. So this is just brown and ultramarine blue. Um, let's just strengthen these first. One across. I don't like how they're all sort of symmetrical. Just looks unnatural on that way. Let's come down again. Where else do I want darks? Um, I want that to look darker than that. Okay, give that a bit more punch. I want a few more darks along there. To the rigger brush. Let's just flick a few things up here and see what that looks like. I've probably overdone it now. It's so tempting to just keep just keep going at it. Into a few reflections down there. So it's starting to, I think those, those darks definitely helps, I think. It's just ultramarine. Is that a quick draw? Well, I'm, th I'm thinking some, just try and maybe some subtle flowers down the front, but nothing too mad. Um, first, I want to get the darks in first. But I might try and match it to this crimson colour. Um, if I just pop in a few darks first. Right now, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna try and see if I just did them in bright yellow. I don't think it, it wouldn't wouldn't really work. I don't think so. I'm just gonna squeeze out a bit of alizarin. in. Not too much. I want to keep it fairly subtle. Um, just squeeze out a bit of blue. Then I've got to dry the. Dry my brush, just squeeze the water out, thumb and forefinger. Let's just scuff that up on the tea towel. And then just take a little bit of crimson, a little bit of blue. Um,
have a touch more crimson. Not too much, I don't want to go barney with it. dots in the centre of each flower just tends to make them look a bit more like flowers can't really see them so well on this I don't think I mean this makes a sort of very very dark very dark greeny colour. And I'm just gonna maybe needs to be a bit darker than that. Just pop. Pop a few stalks in. Too garish. I think I'm going to leave it, leave it at that I think. Um, let's just sign this thing down here. I'm going to call that one finished so let's stick a mount on it and see what it looks like. So here's our finished painting in its mount. So I think the darks contrast quite nicely against the white of the mount. So if we go and have a closer look at it. You see, sky, a bit of a lizarding in there, and that, that, that lizarding is what I've tried to pick up with these foreground flowers. You just about see them there amongst the dark shadows. Um, there's a bit of blue in there, and you can see the blue, the furthest trees away. The blue also helps push things back, generally speaking. Um, this, this dark layer was the same as that, and you can see at the end I, I painted another dark layer over the top of it, just to give it that uh, sort of darker tone. As often, I, I don't actually paint, I do water by sort of painting around it and leave the water. Unless there's some reflections to go in, the water's been pretty much left left as it was. Just with some of the colours of the sky, as I painted the sky and put it in at the same time. Like you can see these little bits of blue here, these little subtle things, little bits of detail that always help make a painting. A few more darks there, and then coming round. Probably the darkest part of the painting of these foreground trees there. Several layers put on. You can see where I scraped in a few rocks and stones there by the, the, the banks of the water. Painted over most of it, but you can just still get, you can imagine the light sort of coming down, just catching the sides of these rocks there in the foreground. You can see how they contrast nice against the darks. So right in the foreground, well, also a few reeds there. I think they work quite well. Flicked up a few uh, little reeds and grasses there by the water's edge, and as previously mentioned, put these mixed a bit of alizarin and ultramarine, and then a little dot on each flower, and then a little stalk, and just gives a few flowers in the foreground, just an added um, layer of interest. 
and another layer as well. It's all about creating layers, another layer there, layer there, and then layers further back creates, help creates that sense of depth. So that's it for this one. Thanks as always for watching. Many thanks for your support and best wishes. Remember to keep posting your own paintings on the community page so we can all see what you're up to. So if you've got any questions, please ask, and I'll see you again soon.